Hey guys, how's it going? So we are gonna be doing a little bit of cooking today as well as maybe a little bit of decorating. I'm actually outside because I need to go get some squash out of the root cellar and I don't know why it is every time I cook some sort of pasta dish, I always feel compelled to film it. <laughs> You guys are gonna think that I don't cook anything other than pasta, but I do I do love a good pasta dish So this is a creamy butternut squash Pasta um, you can use vodka in the sauce I'm not gonna do that today just because I'm not feeling that flavor, but it's like a coconut milk base And I think it's gonna be really good um, And then I do want to cut some pussy willow branches to bring inside to force So Aaron and Benjamin are actually at the store uh, They're picking up some ingredients that I think I'm gonna need and it looks like we got a little tiny tiny layer of snow last night like these pallet boards were clear yesterday, so we got a tiny bit there's Russell, and here's the girls. Hey girls. They're all toasty in their nice covered run. Hey, I'll bring some greens out for you later. Looking good. Oh, Russell, uh-uh, out, 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 out. What a naughty you're being today. So this recipe calls for two cups of butternut squash, which means I'm probably gonna have to grab two of my small honey nut butternut squash. Root cellar is at 40 degrees, which is perfect. Everything's doing pretty good in here right now. Like all of my onions, which these are, well, no, these are candies right here, which are a high sugar onion. They usually don't keep for very long and they're keeping beautifully in here. Garlic's doing great, potatoes are doing great. Quick dahlia check up here. You kind of root around in the vermiculite. You can see there's a tuber right there. Oh, it looks really good. Nice and firm. Tiniest bit of moisture in the vermiculite, which is good. We don't want them to dry out. We don't want it to be too wet, but you know, I was a little worried about, you know, striking that balance this first time storing them this way, but really awesome. Okay, you gotta get that back in the vermiculite there. And for the most part, I think the squash are holding really, really well. So like really firm, really good looking. On this side, I'm not seeing any mold issues at all. Like even that, um, that's still really firm and nice. On this side, however, I just noticed today that there are a couple of these squashes that are forming a little bit of mold at the top which is not a big deal. I expected some of these not to do well because they actually were went through a freeze before I got them in here. And I thought, oh, we'll see what happens. And I've never stored these particular types of squash before. So, I mean, most of them are nice and look good. And I think they'll store for quite a bit longer, but I'm gonna have to root a few of these out. So I haven't had any issues whatsoever with the temperature control in here, but I'm having to mess a lot with the humidity control and that's my own fault because I haven't really learned our system yet. I have the owner's manual sitting on our counter. I need to read through it because at this point what I do is I come out here and check it every day and if the humidity is really high, I turn on a little floor heater and I let it run for a little bit. It brings the humidity down quickly and then I turn it off and let it go for a few days till the humidity builds back up, which I know is not ideal. You don't want to send these uh, this produce through fluctuations of humidity like that, but I just need to sit down and kind of work the kinks out of the system. So far it's working pretty good. And I'm really shooting for like 60% humidity. 60-65%. You can't stay in here, buddy. You know this, right? And here are our butternut squash. So I need two cups total. This will probably do it right here. I think I'm going to grab one more small one. All right, bud. Let's go. Come on, Russell. Kitty, kitty, kitty. We have to show you exiting the root cellar. Otherwise, people will be stressed. Come on. Come on, kitty. Hey, Cheddar. You look like you're faring winter very well. Come on, bud. You gotta come out of there. Gotta show that e Russell has exited. Almost. Almost. Ah, come on. All right, Russell has exited. There are no cats in the root cellar at present. They're both out here. I think once Aaron and Benjamin get back, we're going to probably head down to the garden center as well because part of the decorating I wanna do involves a really beautiful table that's down at the garden center. They're actually closed today, but my parents are down there taking care of some things. And we thought we'd go pick up that table because I just keep thinking about it. And I wanna put it right where we had one of our Christmas trees. And now that the Christmas tree's down, it looks way too empty. 
I gotta put something in that spot. <laughs> also, it is getting exponentially harder to breathe. We are two weeks away from my due date at this point, but doctor said it could happen anytime. Okay, so here we are. I do wanna show you this upside down amaryllis. I'm gonna be completely honest and tell you that when I very first hung it up, I thought, nope, I am never gonna like this. It's too weird. <laughs> but I have to say, that I've actually been enjoying watching the progress of this amaryllis. The other two aren't quite in bloom stage yet, so I haven't brought them back, I haven't brought them out. But it's been kind of fun and different to have that hanging here. Those are from uh, Gardener Supply. So I have one that's in a wax bulb that's white, and then I have a green one and a red one. Anyway, I've got stuff set out already. So there's the squash, and then I've got most everything else here, including the recipe, which I will link down below. But creamy butternut squash a la vodka pasta, I'm going to be omitting the vodka. I brought it out because I thought I would use it, but I don't think I want to. I think I'm gonna sub in chicken broth and uh, apple cider instead because I'm just not feeling that vodka sauce flavor right now. That could be pregnancy, I don't know. And here comes Aaron and Benjamin. Hey, oh, what did you get? You got num nums. I told him he needed to ask mom's permission first. Oh, know. you can have them, bud. Mama said yes. Mama said yes. <laughs> okay. How'd that go? Good. Good. I gotta get more. Okay. Do you want me to open those for you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Here. So there's a couple of different steps that I have to do before I can put this whole pasta thing together. Um, and that's the thing, like it says, cook time, prep time 20 minutes, cook time 40 minutes, total time an hour. Um, I've gotta make some breadcrumbs and prosciutto crumbs to uh, put on the top of the pasta. And then I do have to roast the butternut squash with some shallots and garlic uh, to make the butternut squash puree for the sauce. So we'll start with the breadcrumbs and prosciutto crumbs first. So I've got one cup of ciabatta bread crumbs that have been tossed in olive oil, salt, and pepper, three ounces of prosciutto. We're gonna put this in a 425 degree oven for 10 to 15 minutes just to crisp them all up. This is gonna be the really yummy garnish on top of the pasta in the end. So while the crumbs are cooking, I'm gonna prep the butternut squash and we're going to be cubing that up. I need two cups of cubed butternut squash. We're going to toss it with some fresh herbs, oregano and thyme, which we just started seeds for those a couple of days ago. So I'm so excited to have my own herbs here pretty quick. Um, but we're also going to use olive oil, salt and pepper and crushed red pepper flakes.
squash with the herbs and the red pepper flakes, salt and pepper. And I forgot to mention two small shallots and two cloves of garlic. So they're going into the 425 degree oven for 25 to 30 minutes. Also, I only had to use the one butternut squash and I even had a tiny bit left over, which the chickens will get. All right, it's been in for 25 minutes. Check for tenderness, it's very tender. So we're ready to roll. Perfect. Okay, to make our sauce, I'm gonna empty all of the stuff in this sheet pan, the butternut squash and all the herbs, it smells amazing, into this pan. And then I'm going to add in two tablespoons of olive oil, a quarter cup of the apple cider, three quarters cup of chicken broth, three quarters cup of coconut milk, which this is usually in a solid form inside the can and I just put it in a bowl of hot water in the sink and let it kind of warm up so it's all liquid now. And two tablespoons of tomato paste. And then we're going to use the immersion blender to blend it all up into a nice creamy sauce. deeper pan would probably be preferable here. We'll get it done though. So we're gonna let our sauce simmer for about 10 minutes and while we're doing that, we're gonna make our noodles. So I started off with a bed of the noodles and the butternut squash sauce and then topped it with our breadcrumbs and prosciutto crumbs, a little bit of extra Parmesan cheese and crushed red pepper flakes because I do like a little bit of spice and then a couple sprigs of thyme just for a little color and then of course some garlic bread to go along with it. So Aaron and Benjamin are upstairs playing right now and I'm going to try this out before I call them down. Mmm. Oh that's yummy. You guys that is so good. I'm really happy that I decided to omit the vodka because I feel like the vodka flavor kind of overtakes sometimes and I really didn't want that. I wanted the butternut squash to really shine through and I can really taste it and I can taste the herbs. Now I did have the amount of herbs that the recipe calls for. I think it calls for two tablespoons of each which is way too much for me. Um, I would rather go half on most fresh herbs and then add more in later as a garnish. 
um, because I feel that sometimes it overpowers as well. Especially when you're dealing with like thyme and rosemary, for some reason those types of flavors, like I have to reduce it um, because they're just so strong. Okay, so I think we're just gonna eat our lunch here and then we're gonna go ahead and run down to the garden center to get that table. Let me show you where it's gonna go. Okay, so this is where we just were, right there. And if we kind of pan this direction, I had a Christmas tree right where the coat rack is and the coat rack was right here. And now it looks super empty to me and I feel like I could put a small table here with a really pretty arrangement of some kind. Some branches and things, maybe some hydrangeas from outside. I don't know, it's worth a shot. Naughty, naughty bed. <laughs> naughty, naughty? Yeah. Yeah? All right, we gotta hurry because Nana and Papa are waiting for us. The snow's melting. All right, we're here. Hey, how you doing? Hey, Papa. Here. Hey, Benny, Benny. Let's put these down for a moment. Okay, ready? <laughs> there you go. What are you doing? I'm having a piece of gum. All right, let's go look at this table. Where is it at, Laura? Uh, it's in this back, right back here. And there it is. That is so pretty. I think it'll fit perfect by the fridge. Have you got the tailgate down ready? already? This is the heavy yes. piece right here. Yeah, that's, that's that looks pretty it. solid. Oh, hey. Yes, take care of some plants. They don't care that we're closed. Yeah, that's true. Plants and the birds, they still need help. Yes, they do. Aaron's got the first piece in, almost. Here comes the second piece. I would like to use that just as a pillar somewhere too. It's really pretty. Yeah. yeah. It's possible I might have to with where I want to put it. Yeah. The top might be a tiny touch too wide, but I can use it as a pillar if, and then it use it as a table purpose. later. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that works. <laughs> well, I'm glad that I could, that Aaron was able to keep hoe that into the back of the truck by himself because that's what's gonna have to happen once we get home. Oh, it's so pretty. There's so many plants in here. So many. <laughs> So many Did possibilities. Any ideas? <laughs> what do you want next, Laura? Oh, nothing. <laughs> you know that's not true. I know. Look at all of these plants. My word. I think it's like it's time for another house plant tour in here. Dang. All right, heading home. Why is it so wobbly? Yeah, baby. I can move it. Yeah, if you, if you pick it up. Try that. That looks pretty good from that angle. It fits absolutely perfectly. I was a little bit worried because when you don't have the piece in your space, I looked at that tabletop and thought, oh, I don't know. It might be a little bit wide, but it just is perfect there. And we're used to having something there anyway because the coat rack is way wider than that table is with all of the fluffy coats kind of poking out there. And we have several feet between the table and the stairs to get through. So yeah, super happy with it. I have this little pile of dried hydrangeas right here and I'm gonna go outside and cut some branches and just create some really simple arrangements to go in these blue and white vases.
Well, I ended up with a bunch of really pretty stuff. So I went ahead and took the whole Pussy Willow shrub down because they get so huge and I don't really want it to get as big as they want to get in the spot where I have it. And this will be gorgeous. So these are called catkins. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Well, of course it's focusing down here. We'll just go with it. And those will open to little furry looking pods. They're really beautiful even just right now with the color. I've got a little pine and cedar left over from holiday projects. And then in the bucket here, I've got some organ grape, which looks really good. That's its winter color right there. There's some euphorbia, not beautiful. There's some quick fire hydrangea blooms. And then yarrow, I just like to leave those seed heads up through the winter because they're so gorgeous. Then we've got some sedum there, and more organ grape. I don't know, I think we can come up with something pretty. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of water in each one of these vases, and I'm not gonna use any kind of frog just because I know they're gonna be thick enough with branches that the branches will help hold everything in. And we'll just see how this thing comes together. Oh, I think it turned out so perfect for this spot. We got a lot of impact vertically, but I did walk around the whole thing to make sure that there weren't any branches that were going to hit anybody in the face or you know, possibly snag on clothing and then pull a whole vase off the table or anything like that because I have had that happen before. Um, I used to do things a little bit more full and kind of not care, <laughs> but I do care now. Um, so I did use Pussy Willow branches as a centerpiece. I've got quite a number of them left so I can do another arrangement for somewhere else in the house. In fact, don't judge me. Look at this, what a mess. But I'll get some other beautiful stuff out of this. So I just have to pick through the pile. After I put the branches in, I went in with some pine because it's got a lot of nice color. And then we've just got a lot of other things. So the euphorbia's just kind of popped in there. The uh, organ grape, I only picked three stems of that. So I used two in the big one, one in the small one. And then the rest of the stuff that I use, they're all dried elements, which is wonderful because then you don't have to worry about making contact with the water. You can just pop them in and leave them at the height you want them and you don't have to worry about if they're going to draw water up or you know start to wilt or whatever. So we got a lot of color and texture just out of a few things out of the garden. I did decide to leave the third vase empty because I think we need to have that resting space for your eye. I think it would have been way too much to do three on this table. And then I did put a little candle for some light. I do think I wanna look for a lamp for this table eventually. I'll have to figure out though because the plug-in is behind the fridge. Um, or around the corner. So I'll have to figure out a good way to hide the cord, um, but I do think it would be nice to have a little bit of extra light in this spot. And that is it for today's projects, other than cleaning up my mess and probably creating an arrangement for somewhere else in the house. But it is getting darker outside, which means it makes it really hard to show you guys stuff in here especially. Um, but I'm just so thrilled with how this whole arrangement came out, like the size of the table and the vases. I wasn't even sure if the one, the table would fit, and two, if I had the right kind of configuration of things to put on it. Um, so it's always fun when it comes together like that. And I think the blue and white are really nice for January. And these arrangements should last for weeks and weeks um, because uh, most of the stuff, like the branches will be great and they will kind of, uh, the catkins will open. Um, the evergreens will stay nice for long, a long time. The cedar will probably be the first one to go. And then I'm guessing the euphorbia, but I can pop those things out here and there and then I can slide other things from the garden out into these arrangements as they need it. And as far as the recipe goes, I would definitely recommend giving it a try. It is super, super tasty. I was really happy with that. So anyway, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.